For the past year, I've spent a lot of time trying to understand the impact of wind turbines on the people living and working around the Warbra wind farm in central Victoria. Working quite independently of the wind industry, I've interviewed a large number of people, including all 30 of the farmers who are hosting turbines on their land. I've also contacted all seven of the complainants registered with Achiona, the wind company involved, as well as some others who, for various reasons, don't register their complaints with Achiona. Unfortunately, my attempts to understand the complainants' issues have not been very successful. What I have found, though, is that none of the 30 families hosting turbines on their land appear to suffer any adverse health effects. They claim to be fit and healthy and not bothered by the turbines. They generally look well to my layperson's eye and their contracts certainly don't gag them from speaking out. There's also a large number of people who live close to turbines who are not hosts and who are not troubled by the turbines. So I thought it was time turbine hosts and some of their neighbours were heard. Here you can see where all the people interviewed for this program live in relation to the 128 turbines which are marked by the blue dots. Most of the people are very much in the middle of the wind farm. OK, I think it's time to meet the hosts and some of their neighbours. We, we hear them if we come outside some days. We can hear them, but they're not offensive to us. You just just turn off if they're a little bit loud, or but very rarely we can hear them. We can't hear them in the house. Oh, we hear them a little bit from time to time, depending on the atmosphere, but it's not uh, nothing that would um, make you sick or make you um, um, want to go tropo or anything like that. We don't hear them at all in the house. They, uh, yeah, they're there, and we haven't got double glazed windows or anything like that. So I, I can hear the noise occasionally if I go out to hang out the washing or something. Or we live in a house probably eight or nine hundred metres from from all the wind towers. I can see twenty seven wind towers from our kitchen, and um, we have no impact. Can't hear them at night. Yeah, we love it here. It's just a great place, and we do hear the turbines occasionally. Um, and you can, occasionally can hear them in the house. We have no, um, no effects from them whatsoever. We have no trouble at all with uh, any noise or anything else concerning the, the um, turbines. Uh, the people next door to us who have been here for a, a far longer than we have, about nine years, um, we spoke to them before we purchased here and they have no problem at all either. We've been here since uh, the wind turbine started and uh, I don't think there's any, uh, we have no feeling of any illness, any, um, or we, I won't say we can't hear them, we're about two kilometres from the uh, closest turbines. The wind farms are not a, uh, do not bring up negative feelings for, for us. So I have my second youngest son works with me on the farm. I also have a brother that works with me as well too. And uh, yeah, we just work around them on a daily basis and uh, don't have any effects or uh, any concerns with them as far as illness or uh, any other ailments. We don't get any pressure um, health-wise, uh, pressure in the head or anything like that. Um, we're quite comfortable um, and it hasn't sort of affected our health uh, since they've been here. Um, we just like live like normal farmers. <laughs> In here at Warbra we have um, turbines surrounding us, like right around like north, south, east and west of us. And the closest we have is um, about 800 um, metres from us. Um, it's not that we don't hear the wind turbines, we certainly hear them on certain days, but uh, they've never had any effect to, of, of our health or anything else. There's people who are concerned about their property values, and again, that seems reasonable, but that, that isn't supported by what we've seen at council in the sense of things, and particularly places like Warbur and Evanston, where, where property prices have continued to move gradually, but moved in a positive direction. Certainly where there's some small instances like in the middle of the wind farm where you might have a landlocked house, 
um, there has been an effect on it, but that's the only area where we've seen the impact. It certainly hasn't impacted agricultural values and hasn't impacted around the edges of the wind farm at all from what Council's seen from its official valuations. A few recent properties before they've kind of um, in water since wind towers are built hit uh, record highs but now uh, they've come down a little bit because but it's to do with the um, general economy because um, potatoes uh, come down in price and the tree plantations are getting sold, the ground's coming down so that's affecting broad acre cropping ground and it's coming down again but any farms um, with wind towers on it are still making really good money. Foundation is really people from outside the Warbury area. Uh, some come from South Australia, some come from Port Lonsdale, and uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, I think that uh, that's a bit of that whole thing's a bit of a farce because they've roped them in from everywhere, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I've got no time, I wouldn't even give them the time of day if they turned up here. The Warbury Foundation very much has taken, I suppose, the light on what. Warbra is and I think in that sense it's painted a picture of Warbra that may be true for a small number of people but certainly isn't reflective of the whole community. They consider that they have a right uh, to make decisions and be very vocal about our district uh, which I feel uh, quite annoyed about, uh, especially when I hear about the Warbra disease and we have to live in that and we're not, we're, we've never been consulted. Those people do not come to the area and consult us. So I feel quite uh, angry uh, that um, they have had the opportunity and we perhaps um, disappointed in ourselves too that we didn't get to counterbalance them earlier uh, in their arguments. That's right. yeah. Some of the facts they've put out are all one way, uh, and they uh, just haven't listened to the uh, uh, to the general, you know, the, the general mass of people. Uh, the Warbra Foundation, to best of my knowledge, none of the people actually live here. I've never met any of the people. Uh, they haven't actually had any input into anything in Warbra as far as community-wise goes. But uh, they seem to have a very noisy minority, which uh, spells out that uh, how bad the wind turbines are. Um, firstly, it is a renewable source of energy without a doubt, um, but also it, it regionalises and it brings industry out to places around here. Like, we, we, we don't have an industry like that. All we've got is agriculture, and it certainly has broadened the economic base of the community quite significantly. So the community's had lots of benefits. Basically, Axiona have moved in here, and more so than a worker, they're a community member. They get involved in um, all our fundraising activities. They'll come to footy games. They've just merged into our little community and, and just love being here. Um, from a school perspective, we've actually been given some fundraising money to allow a specialist music teacher to come and run music classes, and the kids are just just thriving from a, a basically additional financial support that is directly coming from the wind towers. I really think that this wind farm that came to the Warbra district is the best thing that's happened in the Warbra district in a lot of years and uh, with, the, with the money that the, uh, the uh, community fund puts into the district and also into the Shire and also the money that the farmers get, uh, that's money that's spent in, in the surrounding areas and uh, it wouldn't be here only for the wind farm. Of the, of the around about 220 households in the area, councils received 15 formal complaints uh, and they've come from a range of reasons in, the, in this situation. There's been quite a significant number but um, I think they've, a number of those have probably worked themselves through by now. I'm a fairly positive person, so I'm probably thinking about 95% of the, the Warbra community have no issues with the towers, or they might have a comment here and there, but basically get on with their lives and just go along working around them. Is, um, we uh, estimate, or reckon just from talking uh, to people at Warbra, that about 90% are in favour of the wind towers, got no problems with them at all. <laughs> 
contract that we've signed with Oceana, uh, there is nothing in the contract that states that we can't speak publicly about it. We've just um, had permission, you've actually seen our contract that come through, that Axiona has seen that, so it's available. And Axiona have never um, said that we can't talk to anyone, and uh, Dr Sarah Laurie's never contacted us or anyone that we know that's had wind towers around Warburton. So I don't think they're a problem, I think they're great. And, you know, really, We've got to think about better ways of producing energy. We need electricity, so why not get it free from the wind and be environmentally friendly as well?